So it's about time I did another science of video on a superhero. But instead of taking a look at one of the heroes from the big two comic publishers, I'm going to take a look at a hero who's absolutely... <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the science of, where today we're taking a look at... That's right, we're taking a look at Amazon's third superhero show, alongside the equally bloody show based on The Boys, and the more family-friendly show based on The Tick. Now, if you hadn't heard of Invincible before this series was announced, I can't say I'd blame you, as it was published under the Image Comics label. A group who've published series with popular adaptations such as The Walking Dead and Kick-Ass, but they don't seem to be brought up in comic conversations as much as Marvel or DC. Invincible first appeared in Image Comics' Savage Dragon series, before getting his own solo series in 2003. And this featured the adventures of Mark Grayson, learning to become a superhero from heroes like the Teen Team and his Superman-esque father, Omni-Man. Just to say, in case you haven't watched the series already, there will only be some minor spoilers for the series, focusing on the second episode. During this second episode, Mark takes a trip into space in order to attempt to defend the Earth against an oncoming threat. But for some reason, even though we know that space-worthy breathing suits are a thing in this world, Mark decides to go out without a spacesuit and instead just holds his breath to keep himself oxygenated as he fights an oncoming alien. Whilst this doesn't end up becoming a significant threat to the world, it does end up with Invincible staying on the moon for a prolonged length of time to have a chat with the alien Alan, who is able to converse with him telepathically. But this prolonged chat brings up an important question. Mark is up on the moon for a pretty long time without any air or protection from the spacesuit. So, how long could he be able to hold his breath in the vacuum of space, and would there be any complications other than the lack of air that could damage him permanently? Before we start today's video, just a quick word to say, if you enjoy it, then don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to see more of the science behind the content you love. Today's video is a tad bit shorter than most, owing to me being at the end stage of my master's degree, but the next video should be back to the normal length. So, it's important to note that Mark is not a human. He's from an alien race called the Viltrumites, so abilities will inevitably differ. The main aim of this video is to see how a human hero such as Atom Eve or Rexplode would last if they had to withstand the same situation. This means we'll be looking at how long he had to withstand being in space. For this, we can use the screen time that Mark is in space for, and this is a surprisingly long time, with the interactions taking place over 2 minutes and 20 seconds. But we need to keep in mind that this doesn't take the amount of time that it takes for Mark to leave and re-enter Earth's atmosphere. When we look at a wide range of sci-fi media, we see many depictions of space where humans explode or freeze to death. Now, one of these is pretty realistic, the other one, not so much. But of course, no scientist has actually tested putting someone without a spacesuit into space because of the whole ethical issues regarding that whole situation. In terms of freezing, you definitely would end up frozen if you stayed in space for long enough. Space is incredibly cold, being roughly 2.7 Kelvin or minus 270 degrees Celsius. But the reason you'd freeze so slowly is less about the temperature and more about how efficiently your body heat can transfer out of your body in a vacuum. There are three ways to transfer heat from one area to another. These include conduction, which involves heat being transmitted through collisions between molecules, and naturally this occurs more readily in solids and liquids, where the particles are much closer together than in gases. Then you have the convection method of heat transfer, which is found in most liquids. This occurs due to the rising of warmer fluids, compared with the sinking of cooler fluids caused by changes in density by heating up molecules. Finally, you have transfer of heat through radiation. This is the only method of heat transfer that can occur in the vacuum of space. The human body emits radiation all the time at a variety of wavelengths, but it's not that much, emitting in an energy range similar to that of an incandescent light bulb, meaning that it would take a long time for all of that heat to irradiate out of your body whilst you're floating in space. The time that you could survive before freezing would depend on a wide variety of factors, including your body composition, skin tone, whether or not you're in direct sunlight, and even if you had a large meal before being thrown into space. This means you could last as long as 12 hours in space, providing you don't end up getting cooked by being in direct sunlight. Many sci-fi shows have also suggested that the main issue with surviving in space without a spacesuit would be the change in pressure. But your body would actually be able to withstand that. What it could not withstand is the lack of oxygen. And in this way, we can think of travelling in space as being the same as exposing a human to the depths of the ocean. 
Now, of course, there are many ways that you could survive in those environments. One of which being to bring an air tank to provide you with oxygen whilst you're in a low oxygen environment. But for some reason I cannot explain to you, Invincible instead decides that holding his breath is the best answer for this problem. Probably because of time issues, but there's teleportation technology here, and we know that they have space-worthy breathing helmets because of episode 4. So, who knows, maybe it's just budget constraints. Either way, Invincible flies up to the moon to meet the potential threat to Earth and must hold his breath for roughly two and a half minutes, which is well within the range of a human's abilities. In fact, the current world record for holding your breath underwater is over 24 minutes, meaning that Mark's time in space would be no problem. But what could the possible impact be of holding your breath for an extended period of time? Well, now that we know that Mark could hold his breath for long enough to have his interaction with Alan the alien, we can now look at the adverse effects that would happen if we were exposed to the vacuum of space for longer than he could hold his breath. Obviously, spending any amount of time without oxygen is going to be harmful, no matter what organism we're looking at, whether it be plant, animal or even virus. Holding your breath not only results in you not being able to take up oxygen into your body, but also doesn't allow you to expel large amounts of carbon dioxide released through your cells through the process of respiration that occurs in the cell's mitochondria. If respiration does not occur, then your cells don't have the ATP required for all actions within your body's cells. If this goes on for long enough, the lack of oxygen will cause significant issues, including abnormalities in the pumping and rhythm of your heart as it tries to push any remaining carbon dioxide from respiration out of the body. That's not even mentioning the impact that this lack of oxygen would have on the brain. Once the body runs out of oxygen, it only takes a couple of seconds for the brain to shut down in order to protect itself. And after that, you'd struggle to keep any kind of consciousness at all. So there we go. Whilst the show states that Mark's the only hero able to protect the Earth from this imposing threat due to his Vultramite given powers, any of the human heroes from Atom Eve to Rexplode would have been able to survive in space for the same amount of time. The bigger issue would have been what they would have faced once they were out of Earth's orbit. As always, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help combat the ever-changing and frustrating YouTube algorithm, then make sure to share the video to help my channel grow. If you have any scientific subject or topic that you'd like to see me cover in the future, then please tell me in the comments down below. As well as that, follow me on Twitter to get updates on the latest science of videos and join my Discord for chats about science, gaming and more. But until then, this has been the Science of... I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for game-based content, then you can join me over on Twitch, where I livestream three times a week playing all manner of games suggested by the community. Or, if you want to support the channel even further, then you can also contribute to my Patreon, where you'll get behind-the-scenes access to the creation of all videos, as well as being able to vote on what the next science of video will be.